Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we have the latest from the live radar from the latest UKV having the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as temperatures are going to slowly climb up over the next few days but it is still going to remain below average with increased unsettled conditions especially this weekend. Into the start of next week, we could actually see some slightly colder air returning for a couple of days. Not going to do anything too bad other than perhaps a couple of overnight frosts looking pretty harsh in some spots. Um, and yeah, just generally remains fairly chilly, but not quite as cold as it has been over the past few days. As we progress into the longer range to end November and start December, it is looking pretty unsettled in deep with perhaps parts of the tropospheric polar vortex getting shoved to our side of the pole. Now, this is not a too much of an uncommon pattern, especially during sort of late autumn into winter, but it's something we haven't really seen too much so far this autumn. Uh, of course, we have seen named storms, uh, but when we see the tropospheric polar vortex sat across the North Atlantic, it really can be a proper breeding ground for big storm systems. It's also a pretty chilly pattern, not especially cold, so we probably wouldn't be looking at snow, but definitely chilly with a lot of cold air getting fed into those low pressure systems out in the North Atlantic. There is still a lot of conflicting views, of course. As we've alluded to, there is a sudden stratospheric warming likely taking place in the coming days and weeks, and that still is yet to be 100% modelled by uh, some of the long range charts, especially as we progress sort of through the troposphere. So we've still got to contend with that. And there's even still quite a lot of considerable disagreement between the runs today. The GFS, yes, has tropospheric polar vortex dropping towards Greenland and Iceland, but it actually builds a really strong Scandinavian high, whereas the ECMWF does produce a big lobe of the tropospheric polar vortex towards the North Atlantic, if not over the top of us, giving us an incredibly stormy period there to start December. So a lot of got a lot of conflicting views, but it doesn't look like we're going to see anything too quiet in the next couple of weeks. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see a band of precipitation is moving in at the moment. A little bit of hill snow, but most it is turning to rain. And that's because the dew points are rising as more of an Atlantic airflow is coming in behind this. Ahead of this weather front, We've still in the cold air. So for many across England and Wales, temperatures are actually really cold tonight and they will be cold into Saturday morning. You see a widespread frost taking place. Coldest temperatures actually in southern and eastern England down towards minus three to maybe minus five tonight before that rain cloud moves in during tomorrow. Now, as I said, we're not going to see a massive sweeping area of warm air or mild air. So, yes, rain will be moving in. Temperatures will nudge higher, maybe seven or eight degrees, maybe even a nine or ten summer across the southwest. But for most, it's still going to remain fairly chilly, feeling perhaps even still pretty cold. But we do eliminate the risk of seeing any wintriness in the next couple of days as a result of those milder dew points. Now, if you look at the latest UKV, you can see that precipitation moving in from the west at the moment. It continues to make more and more progress into the early hours of Saturday. Where it doesn't move in, that's where we could see the frost lasting all the way into the morning. But it should readily melt uh, and unfreeze into the middle portion of the morning, into the afternoon as rain does spread. It looks like a fairly unsettled day there in the south and the east. Not looking overwhelmingly heavy, but definitely quite persistent and widespread. Elsewhere, it's a little bit drier overnight. It looks chilly, cold, temperatures down towards the low single digits, but most likely not dropping too far below freezing. Maybe the only exception there is Scotland, where we could see a few spots getting down towards freezing, which again isn't too unusual for late autumn into early winter. See some more bandings of rain. Looks quite heavy, these little areas of convection into Sunday morning, into the afternoon, looking still pretty unsettled. You can see the jet stream is shifting southwards as the centre of the low travels southwards. And for a time, this could actually drag some cold air back in. You can see a bit of winchiness within some of the showers on Monday and Tuesday. But overall, it's not going to be anything too incredible. incredible. It's going to just drop the temperatures by another couple of degrees back to kind of what they've been today really maybe mid single digits by the day and overnight below freezing for eventually the westerly winds do return we see those upper temperatures at the moment very cold air slowly getting shoved away slightly less cold air but still chilly through the weekend and then as we can head into monday and tuesday we drag in another pulse of pretty cold air from the northeast then that does get swept away into wednesday 
If you look at the max temperatures, you can see overnight tonight a widespread frost, especially in the south and the east. But temperatures will rise into the morning where the cloud does push in. So most getting above freezing by sunrise. Into the afternoon, as I said, still struggling, five to maybe eight degrees. And uh, double digits could be seen across the southwest, but most are still pretty chilly. And overnight into Sunday, mostly we are above freezing. The only exception is probably northern Scotland there, but still cold. It still feels cold, four to maybe six degrees. Into Sunday afternoon, maybe again, only five to eight degrees. So still really quite chilly. And then into Monday, very similar overnight temperatures. And by day, once again, only five to seven degrees. Into Tuesday, a chilly morning, perhaps seeing more of a widespread frost in northern and western areas. And once again, the afternoon, five to seven degrees. And then into Wednesday morning, because that is turning very cold there, zero to minus three, perhaps. And by the afternoon, really struggling still only five to seven degrees so it's not as cold next week as it's been this week and we're not going to see wintriness but definitely could see a couple of days where we do see some pretty cold temperatures uh, and of course overnight frosts ice still being a risk so this cold spell is not disintegrating quickly it is slowly warming up slowly turning mild and will probably be relatively mild in the last couple of days of november but it is taking its time and yeah, we're definitely looking at another few nights of frost, especially into the middle portion of next week. Now, do look at the latest GFS. You can see the northerly winds getting swept away at the moment. So westerly flows returning, but it's a southerly jacking jet. And for a time, we can see a north or northeasterly wind there Monday into Tuesday. Westerly winds don't return by the end of the week, and you see it's more of a southwesterly tilt. So that means milder air will be pushing it, at least for a time. Now, as I said, the GFS is quite conflicted here. We do see a big lobe of tropospheric polar vortex, these darker blues and purples shifting well into the North Atlantic. And this would normally spell a pretty stormy pattern. But we actually have a big Scandinavian high developing. Now, it's not pushing right into the Arctic or getting close to the Arctic. So it's not going to be pulling in bitterly cold easterly winds. But what it will do is develop a slightly chillier easterly flow, continental air, so definitely frosts, and you can see the dew points are relatively dry and cold as well across Europe. So it could be some slightly warmer dew points mixing in there. So it would generally actually be a relatively dry, but relatively chilly pattern by day. Perhaps temperatures not getting much above five, six, seven degrees, and by night could get close to freezing. So it's not, again, anything remarkable, but it definitely remains fairly cold there into early December. But it's all because this high holds off the Atlantic onslaught. And you can see the lobe of tropospheric polar vortex getting shifted towards Greenland, Canada, out towards the North Atlantic. But for us, this high is still very dominant. Now, you should be looking at this and be saying, oh, a bit of a battleground scenario. But... The models are not agreeing. The GFS, GM and Easter F are all kind of at odds with each other, which I'm not too surprised by, given what's going on high up in the atmosphere. The sudden stress for warming, other climate drivers definitely promoting more blocking patterns. And as ever, that uh, creates a lot of confusion and a lot of chopping and changing within the operational runs. So I'm not surprised to see runs disagree. And they will. I, w uh, I do mean they will continue to disagree over the coming days and most likely the coming weeks we will probably have very low confidence in the sort of near future uh, especially kind of the seven to ten day time frame very low confidence because of all these chopping and changes so do take that in mind when looking at these charts uh, do not take any single run as gospel as it most likely will be wrong one of the runs will be right but it's impossible to say what it will be the gm is similar but again it still disagrees again very similar the next kind of four or five days degrees out to that point but then we do see the westerly flow and then look at that a really tr strong tropospheric polar vortex but it's sat more over the arctic so it's more of a generic stormy westerly flow and it would actually be relatively mild look at this big warm wedges the biggest change though is look at this low pressure is sat over scandinavia the pressure is 50 or 60 millibars lower than the ec uh, than the sorry the gfs was showing which is remarkable difference uh, again runs are a complete polar opposites um but as i said even though both the Eastern Earth and the GM are very low pressure dominated, you can see the GM here has pretty strong core of tropospheric polar vortex towards the Arctic. Now, there is a chance that the sun's stratospheric warming actually shifts the 
troposcopic polar vortex our way and actually turns us very unsettled. That is an outcome. That is a possible scenario. But what isn't normally a scenario is something like this, where nothing happens to the troposcopic polar vortex. It stays fairly intact right over the Arctic. So this run is probably the one I would disregard. Uh, I wouldn't say it's you know, impossible to happen, but given the long-term drivers that we have, I'd be very, very surprised if this run came off, uh, where, yeah, we're seeing very little disturbances to the polar vortex uh, in the troposphere, even though we know there's big disturbances going up higher up in the atmosphere. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a confusing run there from the GEM. The Eastern Earth is similar, but because it's got proper displacement of the tropospheric polar vortex, it's definitely more believable and is definitely a possible outcome. And you can see continual westerly flow into next week, similar to the GM initially, with a lot of low pressure right over the Arctic. But eventually, look at this, the low dips out into the Atlantic, and we do see exceptionally unsettled conditions with the tropospheric polar vortex displaced towards the North Atlantic. You can see that if we look at the Northern Hemisphere view, it's now sat over the Arctic, it's displaced to our side of the pole. And if we look at the upper air temperatures, it sends some really cold air into Northern Canada, lots of cold air feeding into the uh, Atlantic, a lot of mild air feeding into Eastern Europe, and we're in the battleground, um, which means that we'd probably be in between some milder sectors, some colder sectors. But I think the biggest thing will be is we would be exceptionally unsettled. I can't reiterate that enough. Exceptionally unsettled. And you can see that from the accumulated precipitation here. Just a conveyor belt of rain and moisture coming in off the Atlantic. Uh, temperatures wouldn't be particularly great either if we go down to the surface. You can see it's not amazing, you know maybe here 16 or 17 for a couple of days. But yes, temperatures are not going to be that amazing. Seven or eight degree days. It's going to be very chopping and changing with this sort of outcome. So a very interesting ECM that we have run. It is definitely an outcome that is possible as a result of the incoming uh, displacement event in the stratosphere. But again, I would definitely favor blocking patterns emerging. Um, we're not really seeing that on this ECM though if run. If we were seeing it and it was cropping up in Asia or North America, then I would say perhaps the blocking is appearing not on the European side of the pole. And if that was the case, then yes, this definitely looks like a possible outcome and maybe blocking won't affect us into early December. But the fact that it's not cropping up at all is telling me that yes, the models are trying to deal with it as a result of this displaced tropospheric polar vortex but not quite resolving it so far as it would be um yeah pretty unprecedented to see a big warming high up in the stratosphere especially this early on in the season and to not really see anything propagating through the atmosphere uh into early december so definitely very skeptical definitely very confusing um and yeah we'll have to wait and see but some uh, some more interesting runs today that again we'll continue to bank and continue to compare them to each other in the coming days now if you look at the ensembles there's really no outcome longer range no really agree agreement chilly and unsettled over the next week you can see temperatures into next week actually return around five degrees below average for a time but then springboard back towards average maybe above average there late november into early december hovering in around average there so nothing deviating too much some other runs, some cold runs, but again, no overwhelming signal, which again says to me that the models really from around the 27th, 28th of November don't really have a clue exactly what's going to happen, which is, as I said, seven days and beyond going to be a lot of uncertainty in this scenario. If you look at the latest ECM Earth ensembles, the midday run is just coming out, but we've got it out to early December now. Very, very similar. Perhaps a bit more confidence with a rebound on the 27th, 28th, but beyond that, the ensemble mean is back towards the average and then a lot of runs above and below. Perhaps again more, slightly above, but it's not overwhelming. It's a couple of degrees um, at this stage. So I definitely think we'll have to wait and see what happens. Definitely still chilly. Definitely prolonging this slightly colder spell further towards late November. But definitely looks like we are going to see a rebound to milder and settled conditions to end the month and start December. What happens after that... It's anyone's guess, really. Uh, there is a lot of modelling going on, uh, a lot of conflicting views, a lot of drivers that are saying one thing and we're seeing the other. And it all just tells me that, yeah, don't believe a single run uh, or any single run over the next few days. We've got to look at all the runs together, all the ensembles, compare them day on day. And hopefully that does build us a narrative um, and does build us a bit of a story of what 
is going to happen the developments watching those to see where the models are taking us as we do head into the first month of winter so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon